in this video I'll we'll quickly run through how to do the calculations for this practice evaluative task. There are a couple of things I need to point out first. We have an explanation of the practical with the diagram there and some data that was collected. We then have some other data here. This is including the gradient of the graph, the y-intercept of the graph, the equation that was given as part of the quantitative task, the value of g, the value of m and how it was calculated, the value of r and how it was calculated. We then have a graph. We're told that the solid line of the graph is the line of best fit. This dotted line is the worst acceptable line. I'm going to go through the questions one to four, which are the calculations, and then commenting on the values. Okay. Just, uh, I'll put that to the side. Question one is determine the percentage difference between the experimental value of the mass of the rule R and the value of 0.125 kilograms measured by a balance. You need to understand that the 0.125 kilogram value that was given in the question, that's the actual value or the expected value. To work out the percentage difference, R percentage difference, I need to do the experimental minus the actual over the actual. It's only the magnitude that is important, so I'll do the modulus times 100. So I have the actual value here, 0.125. Um, the experimental value is in this set of data here, which is the calculated value of R up there. So percentage difference, experimental, this one, 0 0.111, 1, minus the actual uh, here, 0.125, divided by the actual 0.125. Make sure you divide by the actual and not the experimental. And that's times 500. Okay, so if I calculate that, just ignoring the negative, times 100, that's 11%. That's my percentage difference calculation done. Next, from the graph grid, determine the gradient of worst acceptable straight line, which is the dashed one, and hence determine the percentage uncertainty in the gradient. The percentage difference in the gradient is the percentage uncertainty in the gradient. So it's another percentage difference calculation. Oops, sorry, that's not R, this is gradient. So this one I do the worst gradient minus the best over the best. Again it's a modulus. Therefore I need to determine what the gradient of the dashed line is. So for my points I'll use here where the dashed line is going neatly across this point, this intersection of horizontal and vertical grid lines and up here as well it's going neatly between an intersection there. So these points are, this is, yeah, I'll label these one and two, then one, so x1 is point naught seven and y1 0 0.10, 0 0.2, I've got 
0.7 and 0.268. Okay, so I have my values there. So MW delta Y over delta X. When you calculate what that is, it is 0.267. I suppose I should point out, I tend to, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Make sure we get them the right way around. And that's your gradient of worst fit. We don't need to work out the gradient of the best fit line because it's given to us in the data up here, 0 0.303. So now I can do my percentage difference calculation, 0.267 minus 0.303 is the modulus of that divided by 0 0.303 which is my best value up here all the best data data is given here times 100 if we calculate that it'll come out as 12 percent I've got percentage difference in R, the percentage uncertainty in the gradient. Next, the percentage uncertainty in R. For here, I need to look at the calculation for R that was done. So this is a, the experimental uncertainty. This value here, 0 0.066, is the y-intercept and 0.336, that's the m value. 0.2, that's a constant there. So that does not have any uncertainty, but these two do have uncertainty. So r is equal to c times m over 0.2. You can see that up here in this term here if you rearrange it. Okay, M then. M is dependent upon the gradient and G. G as a constant, so that doesn't have any uncertainty, it's given to us 9.81 meters per second squared, but the gradient does, and we are dividing one by the gradient and this constant, so two constants in there. The only uncertainty comes from the gradient, so therefore if m is 1 over the gradient times g, therefore the percentage uncertainty in m is equal to the percentage uncertainty in the gradient. Therefore, using uncertainty rules, the percentage uncertainty in R is equal to the percentage uncertainty in C plus the percentage uncertainty in M, which is equal to the percentage uncertainty of the gradient. I know this value. I don't know the percentage uncertainty in C, so it's a percentage difference calculation. I'll write that down here. Percentage uncertainty in C is equal to C worst minus C best, again dividing by the best value. So I divided by the best value here, the best value here, the best value here, or the expected value, expected and best correlate. Okay. <coughs> the worst acceptable line is crossing at 0.082. So that's going to be. 0.082 minus 0.066 again best value from the best line is given up there okay so work that out that would work out as 24% And then percentage uncertainty in R, which is percentage uncertainty in C plus the percentage uncertainty in the gradient, 
is equal to 24 plus uh, that 12%, which is 36% in total. Okay, done a lot of calculations. Question four, so that's worth three marks. One mark there, one mark there, one mark there. Question four, we need to comment on the accuracy and reliability. So we've got reliability and accuracy. The two aspects of this question are, first, look at the scatter of the points about the line of best fit, and two, we compare the percentage difference in R with the percentage uncertainty in R. So firstly, looking at the graph, which is going to tell us about the reliability. If I look at the graph, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plots. Uh, this is a reduced size graph, so actually any variability in here is going to be doubled. Uh, needs to be doubled. The, we've got five good points, but we've got two here which are quite far away from the line. These are about both are about three millimeters. So if we doubled the size of the graph, that'd be about six millimeters away. Um, so they're quite, they're fair, fairly scattered. What we would say then is there is a small scatter of the points, or sorry, some scatter. We've got some scatter of plots around the line of best fit. And what that means is that there is some random errors in the experiment. So that's our comment on the reliability. There's a little bit of random error. Next we'll compare our percentage difference with our percentage uncertainty. The percentage difference is less than the percentage uncertainty. I'm not writing it out in full, I'm using signs and notation. So that says percentage difference is less than the percentage uncertainty in R. I'm talking about the values with respect to R here. What that means is that the true value of R lies within the experimental uncertainty. That's all we have to say in that case. Let's just suppose as an alternative that the percentage difference was larger than the percentage uncertainty in R in that case, what we would say is that the percentage difference is larger than the percentage uncertainty. Therefore, the true value of R lies outside the experimental uncertainty. That would indicate the presence of a systematic error. That is questions one to four for this evaluative task.